I want to take a look at this proof with you because you're going to need the information from this proof to help you do your homework this week. Let's start out by looking at what we've been given. We're given triangle alpha beta delta with an exterior angle of gamma. So if you look right here in the diagram, I have triangle alpha beta delta drawn. And then also notice the exterior angle gamma, which has been marked with this red arc marking. If you notice carefully, angle gamma has actually been formed by extending the bottom side of the triangle out. And if you notice angle gamma being uh, an exterior angle actually forms a linear pair with the adjacent angle, angle delta, which is one of the interior angles of our triangle. What we're asked to prove is that the measure of this exterior angle, angle gamma right here, is equal to the sum of the measures of angle alpha and angle beta. So I want you to pay close attention to the relationship between the exterior angle gamma as well, or the relationship of the exterior angle gamma to these other angles, alpha and beta. If you notice, angles alpha and beta are much further away from gamma than angle delta is. Angle delta is right next to angle gamma, angles alpha and beta are far away from gamma. Angles alpha and beta are referred to as remote interior angles. <clears throat> and that name, remote interior angles, talks about the relationship between alpha and beta to gamma. They are remote from gamma, because angles alpha and beta are the furthest away from angle gamma. And their interior angles because they are inside the triangle. So when we're talking about the relationship between angles alpha and beta to gamma, angles alpha and beta are called remote interior angles. So what we want to do really in this um, proof is that we want to show that an exterior angle of a triangle is always equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. This will hold true for any triangle, no matter what the measures of the angles of the triangle are. And that's one of the reasons why we are <clears throat> using uh, Greek letters to represent the angles of the triangle. We want to show that this applies to any triangle. We're trying to make this proof very general. So that's why we're not using any numbers here for the angle measure. So once again, what we're trying to show is that in any triangle, uh, the measure of the exterior angle of a triangle is always equal to the sum of the two interior angles that are the farthest away from the exterior angle. Let's go ahead and get started with our proof. Remember that a proof always begins with what's been given. So what we've done right here is we've just repeated uh, the given statement, which we have written at the top of the proof in green. So once again, we're given this very general triangle, triangle alpha, beta, delta, and we're also given an exterior angle, gamma, and that's the angle that's formed by extending the bottom side of the triangle. Now, if you look at this triangle, 
there should be some things that we can already say about this triangle. If we look closely at angles delta and gamma, we can see that they lie on a straight line. As a matter of fact, the exterior angle of any triangle will always form a linear pair with the adjacent interior angle. So together, delta and gamma make this straight line. And so their sum must equal 180 degrees. So that's actually going to be the next statement in our proof. The measure of angle delta plus the measure of angle gamma equals 180 degrees. Okay, um, moving on to the third statement in our proof. We also know from what we've learned in the past that if we add all the angles inside the green triangle, they should equal 180 degrees by the triangle sum theorem. So in step three, we have an equation that says if we add all of these angles inside the green triangle, they should equal 180 degrees. Now I want you to look very closely at statements two and statement three. In statement two, I have that the measure of angle delta plus the measure of angle gamma equals 180 degrees. And then in statement three, I also have 180 degrees. So what I can do, since I know that the measure of angle delta plus the measure of angle gamma equals 180 degrees, is that I can just substitute this sum for 180 degrees. Anywhere I see 180 degrees, I can replace the 180 degrees with the sum of the measure of angle delta plus the measure of angle gamma. So that's the next thing I'm going to do in step four. I'm going to replace 180 degrees with the measure of angle delta plus the measure of angle gamma, since that is also equal to 180 degrees. And so now in step four, I've just rewritten what I had in step three, except on the right-hand side of the equal sign, I have replaced 180 degrees with uh, the measure of angle delta plus the measure of angle gamma. Since in step two, I'm told that the measure of angle delta plus the measure of angle gamma equals 180 degrees. If you're having trouble seeing this, stop the video right here and try and talk yourself through it. Or maybe you want to um, rewind the video a little bit. Okay, now if we look more closely at step four, our equation, we should see that we have the measure of angle delta that appears on both sides of the equal sign. So what we can do is we can get rid of that by subtracting the measure of angle delta from both sides of this equation. So that's the next thing we're going to do. And then uh, the measure of angle delta is going to cancel out from both sides. And we're going to be left with something that looks like this. And so we have the measure of angle alpha plus the measure of angle beta equals the measure of angle gamma. So let's look at this on our diagram, right? The measure of angle alpha is right here, plus the measure of angle beta is right here. And we're told that that equals the measure of angle gamma, okay? Which looks 
pretty much like what we were asked to prove. There's one difference, okay? So the way we got from step four to step five was by using the subtraction property of equality. We subtracted the measure of angle delta from both sides, and this is what we ended up with. The only difference between our statement in number five and what we were asked to prove is that we need to flip what we find on both sides of the equal sign, okay? Here, the measure of angle gamma is on the left of the equal sign. In statement five, it's actually on the right of the equal sign. In our prove statement, the measure of angle alpha plus the measure of angle beta appears on the right of the equal sign. Here in statement five, that expression appears on the left of the equal sign. So the way that we're going to reverse this order is we are going to apply the symmetric property of equality. So by the symmetric property of equality, we can flip this what's on either side of the equal sign. And now we have an expression that looks exactly like what we've been asked to prove. So let's talk a little bit more about what this actually means. The measure of angle gamma refers to the exterior angle of any triangle. Okay, it applies to any triangle since we've used letters for all of our angle measures instead of using specific numbers. So once again, this angle gamma refers to the exterior angle of any triangle. And what this says is that the measure of this exterior angle is going to equal the sum of the two angles inside the triangle that are the furthest away from our exterior angle. And we call these two angles, A and B, uh, remote interior angles. They're remote because they're the furthest away from this exterior angle. They are interior because they are inside the triangle. So what we've shown is for any triangle, an exterior angle is always equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles. Now let's see if I can do a new screen share and we can apply this theorem to your homework. So I'm gonna do a new share and this is actually a problem from lesson practice 23A. Okay, so what we've been doing right here or what we have right here in problems 16 through 18, we have a triangle. We have some exterior angles, angles outside the triangle. Uh, they've been formed by extending the sides of the triangle. And we, we are asked to find um, the measure of angle D down here. That is actually our ultimate goal, is we want to find the measure of angle D. Now, if you notice, angle D is an exterior angle, and our proof just told us that angle D is going to be equal to the sum of angles B and C. Angle D is an exterior angle and angles B and C are remote interior angles relative to angle D. So in order for us to find the measure of angle D, we need to find the measures of angle C and B first. But that should be relatively easy because if you look, angle B forms um, a linear pair with the angle whose measure is 89 degrees and angle C 
forms a linear pair with this other angle whose measure is 120 degrees. So the measure of angle C actually is equal to 180 minus 120 degrees, which should give us 60 degrees. Okay, that's because angle C must add to get what must add to 180 degrees when it's combined with this 120 degree angle. Similarly, if we're solving for the measure of angle B, we know um, that the measure of angle B plus the 89 degree angle must equal 180 degrees. So what that means is that if we take 180 degrees minus the 89 degree angle, we should get the measure of angle B. And uh, 180 minus 89, 10 minus nine is going to be one. And 17 minus eight is going to be 91. So we should get a measure of 91 degrees for angle B. Now, when we get to this, the measure of angle D, it's going to be the sum of the remote interior angles. D is an exterior angle to find its measure it has to equal the sum of angles B and C. So the measure of angle D, write it out, is equal to the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C. That's by the exterior angles theorem, which we just proved. And so the measure of angle D equals 91 degrees plus 60 degrees. And so that should equal 151 degrees. And we've solved our problem.